Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. Richie Stedman of the Culture Halt podcast sat down with me over Zoom back in November 2019, and we talked about some Mormon history groups, both historical churches, as well as some groups like Sunstone, Mormon History Association, and John Whitmer. You'll want to check out this conversation. Here in the second block of the Cultural Hall, you guys are missing out. Uh, One of my favorite things that I have loved about the time of the pandemic is that everyone has moved online to Zoom uh, calls, right? All of these interviews and uh, where the money from Patreon that we get, part of that goes to the the ability to be able to do these Zoom calls. All this to say, if you are a Patreon saint of the Cultural Hall, you get to see the many books that are behind Rick Bennett as we have this uh, chat this morning. I'm seeing uh, the first edition of Saints. I'm seeing uh, Richard Turley's Victims. Is that right? And uh, I'm trying to Mm -hmm. glean some of the rest of these. Um, My my eyes are too blurry. Oh, we got the second. Transcripts there. Let's see. Blood of the Prophets, Richard Turley, Terrible Revolution, Chris Blythe, Scattering of the Saints. Um, that's John Hamer. He would probably be really good to to do. You know, you talked earlier about the, all of the saints. In fact, let me just show you a picture of that. Yeah, pe- people, that because, people that can't see this are loving this. <laughs> yeah, you can't see this. But um, the cover, these are all of, not not all of, but these are a lot of the different branches um, of, of Mormonism. And so... Um, I know he's got Alpheus Cutler. Uh, down here is Gordon B. Hinckley. So you can see these big dots are the mainstream LDS church, basically. Um, but he's got, uh, oh, I can't even see this here. I'll make uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make the cover Smith. available for people to see in the show notes so they can see what we're talking about. The name This of the is book a fantastic is book. Scattering of the Saints, Schism Within Mormonism. So we'll, we'll yeah. also provide so a So this gives you kind well. of a visual. Yeah, it kind of gives you a visual of how many different schisms there are. But this isn't even close. Steve Shields is uh, another guy that I've interviewed, and uh, he uh, he's the one who's documented over 400 um, different well, groups. So. All that to say, Rick, it, are you being pretentious, or have you read all those books behind you? I've read a lot of them. I've read Blood of the Prophets, uh, partly through Victims and Ma- uh, Ma- uh, Ma- Massacre at Mountain Meadows. Uh-huh. Gospel topic series. I've read about half of it, but yeah, I've I've read a lot of them. Good, good, good. <laughs> I buy more books than I can read, which is unfortunate. We always get these books, and we go, yeah, you know, good intentions. I'm going to set that good intention there on the shelf. I'll get there. Now, you have said a, a few things that I just want to ask uh, uh, questions about. Uh, very early on in our discussion today, you talked about um, how you've never understood why we're hush hush about callings or about different assignments. And I want to take a second and talk about that. I think it's ridiculous. I don't understand it. Like I understand it if like, um, you know, if it's six months out and you're going to be the new bishop, right? Like I can understand that, I guess. I can understand the secrecy behind something like that. Uh, you don't want to undermine the, the authority or the ability of that person to do whatever is in their calling. But I have never understood the idea of we're calling you to be a Sunday school teacher. Don't tell anyone until you have been set apart in church on Sunday or, you know, sustained. I I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, and you know, I know Kurt has mentioned this on his podcast. You mentioned Kurt Franken, and he has said that, you know, it's his idea that it's okay to say, hey, we're going to talk to you about a calling. But there's still a lot of this hush hush. And I don't understand it either. I think most of it is really silly. You know, mm-hmm. people speculate when they, when they know the bishop is moving, they speculate who's going to be the new bishop. And you know, I was right on this last occasion. Yeah. Uh, in my heart. <laughs> yeah. You know, and further, just because I want to take this as an opportunity to rant, I don't understand. And, and we're starting to be better about it because of technology, because these face to face meetings aren't able to happen. Uh, I recently was contacted from a, the Bishop Rick and they wanted me to do something. And they said, well, we'd love to be able to hop on a Zoom call and be able to chat with you. Or, you know, can you ha- can you do a phone call? And I was like, This text message, which we're communicating right now, works just fine. You know I'm going to do the thing that you ask me to do, so send it to me in a text message. I'll say yes, and we can forget all of this other garbage of setting the time apart and making sure blah, 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 blah. Just let me know what it is. I'll say yes. Let's move along. Well, you know, and it's funny that you mentioned that um, because I had to get my temple recommend renewed, and so... 
I contacted the bishopric and said, hey, can I get a temple recommended interview? And so my uh, guy in the bishopric was on vacation in San Diego and just mm-hmm. did it over, over phone. It was just mm-hmm. a phone call, asked all the questions and it worked out fine. And then I tried to do it with the state presidency and they were like, no, it has to be done in person and we're not yeah. doing anything in person. Yeah. And I was just like, this is so stupid. Yeah. And so I think there is some flexibility with, with some people, but other people are like, no, it's tradition that we've always done it this way and yeah. we can't change, you know, and I do like, you know, my, my niece got baptized six months ago. We had, I think they limited it to 20 people. But, you know, President Nelson, it used to be completely verboten to film a, a baptism. Um, so they they did do the Zoom. Since I was a close family member, I, I attended in person. Of course, we all wore, wore masks and everything. Um, and so I love that President Nelson is kind of embracing technology. We now have Zoom sacrament meeting, another verboten thing. So mm-hmm. thank you, President Nelson, for allowing us to some flexibility. It seems like there are still some church leaders who fight against that yeah. and, and aren't very flexible. There are some who are. Yeah. Um, and it seems like in, in my stake, we've got kind of a mix of, of some who are open to using technology and others who, who fight against it. So. I wish we'd just embraced it. Well, and uh, and uh, and one step further, and then I want to make sure I ask you about this other thing that I was just curious about, uh, is that we have members, at least in my ward, who are showing up on Zoom that have not ever in the time that I've lived in my ward showed up in person. They're clicking. Now, here's the deal. I can't imagine that they're just clicking so that they show up. I think that they're listening. I think that they're attending. Now, they don't have their video screen on. I don't know what advantage it would gain them to click on it to, you know, give the idea that they're there. So, so we are reaching people that we could not reach otherwise by being able to make it a little more convenient, you know, all of these things. I think that the, the church is going to have at least some struggles as we come out of the pandemic to meeting, you know, regularly. I think that we're going we're gonna to have some problems where people go, yeah, why do we not keep doing this? Why can I not see the you know, talks from sacrament meeting. If I was on vacation, we, I mean, we know we have the technology to be able to record them. I want to still be a part of this ward. Maybe it's not an every week thing or something like that. But I, I, I just think that if we go back to exactly how we were doing it before, not only have we lost a lot, but I think that we'll lose a lot of people as well. Well, yeah. I, I mean, that's an interesting thought. I, I, I never look and see who are the people who who attend a sacrament meeting that, that don't normally. But, you know, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of people the church could reach, and they, they turn that off by saying no cameras in sacrament meetings. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to ask you is you said you became a member of the Mormon History Association. Uh, where do I pay my dues? Do I get a patch? And is there a summer camp? Is, <laughs> is, is that a thing that anybody can be a part of? What? How does that whole thing work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, they typically meet in June. Um, usually about every two or three years they meet in Utah because that's where the majority of the members are. But they, they try to travel around last, um, this past June, it was supposed to be in uh, Palmyra, but it ended up going virtual because, uh, because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I actually interviewed, or uh, Barbara Jones Brown is the executive director for the Mormon History Association. And she asked me to film uh, an interview she did with Richard Turley, who had just recently retired. He's a, used to be the, Oh, I know who he is. He's been, uh, he's been here in the cultural hall. You don't have to, Oh, has you don't have to church. You don't have to church explain to me who these people are. (laughs) So anyway, I filmed that and I'm going to be re-releasing that on my, my podcast here in about a month or so. So I can't remember where it's supposed to be next year. I think next year they're trying to get it back in Palmyra. Hmm. Um, but they usually have it in Salt Lake every two or three years um, for convenience. But they also try to hit other other sites. But yeah, to register MormonHistoryAssociation.org, you can sign up to be a member. Um, they'll send you if you sign up. Uh, they've got a, a quarterly magazine basically that has a lot of very scholarly articles that'll whet your appetite. But you know the the funnest thing is to do the in person meetings um, because. You know, there's there's three meetings that I typically try to go to. Uh, Mormon History Association, by far, 
is the best scholarly the one you'll you'll see. John Whitmer is probably a close second. Um, I went to my first one. That was also in Palmyra two years ago, so that was fun. Sunstone is the third. You know, Sunstone. I like Sunstone a lot. Um, you'll get a lot of scholarly people there. You'll get a lot of non-scholarly people there. Mm-hmm. You'll get um, people who love the church. You'll get people who hate the church. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a little bit more of a mixed bag. I'm usually a little bit more um, picky about who I go to see. But, you know, like Matt Harris goes to Sunstone, Newell Bringhurst, Brian Hales has been to Sunstone. So you'll get some some fantastic people there. And you'll also get some people that have a bone to pick. And I usually yeah. try to avoid those. Yeah, it, it, I mean, some of those things can be pretty interesting, right? I, I, I will check in on some of those and be like, what are they saying? How do I feel about what they're saying? Okay, you know, like I, I because I listen to what someone has uh, against the church or whatever, I don't feel like I have to be like, "You're right." I'm going to take up that that fight as well. I can just be like, "Oh, that's the that's the path. That's the journey that they're on. That's the feeling that they have about that thing." I don't feel that way, and you know, I love them just the same. But I I do. I I I will occasionally jump in on one of those things and and just be like, "What do I think?" Oh no, I don't feel this way at all. I don't feel that way at all. You'll get some weird stuff. Like I, I did, I did attend one uh, that was a stripper that attended gospel principles class and she was going to get a temple recommend. Hmm. And you just kind of raise your eyebrows and go, wow, that's kind of a yeah. unusual lifestyle. Well, um, and I've presented at uh, Sunstone a couple of times, Rick Bennett. And it's been, oh. uh, yeah, it's been, it's been sort of a, for, a fun time. I can, you're going to know her name and I'm not going to be able to think of it off the top of my head, but um, one of the women, one of the women that was um, excommunicated as part of the September 6th, who has continued to go to church. Maxine Hanks. Uh, Margaret Toscano. No, give me the, the woman. Uh, that's Janice been, Allred. No. Um, Ooh, look at you. Let's see here. Uh, Levina Fielding Anderson. That's who it was. Levina. Yeah. Levina and I were on a panel of uh, people that, um, were excommunicated and continued to go to church. Now, I have since rejoined the church, but it was an interesting panel. Uh, I could have just listened to her talk for an hour. And, well, and Zina actually, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. and actually she just did. As it, as, it, as it comes down, the panel was scheduled to be an hour and 20 minutes long. Everyone that was on the panel, there were four of us. I don't remember the other individuals. Everyone took about 30 minutes. And so by the time it got to me, I just said, I've had a similar experience. Thank you for coming to this session of Sunstone. And everyone was like, oh, aren't you going to share more? And I was like, there's not time. We, we, didn't have, we didn't have any time to do this thing. So, so it goes. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so let me ask you this. Now, all that stuff sort of aside, um, you do a podcast called Gospel Tangents. Uh, I did a little research into why you call it that. And I thought that was fun. Why don't you share that? <laughs> so back in college, um, you know, we had, uh, I had some friends and they were trying to decide if Adam had a belly button. Uh-huh. And um, one of them made a, made a comment um, that this, this was the gospel tangents class. Um, so the funny thing was, is I, number one, I didn't realize that that was kind of an indirect um, conversation about the Adam God doctrine. Uh, mm-hmm. I just thought it was an interesting thing about whether Adam really had a belly button. Where do you um, where do you land before we go any further? Adam had a belly button, yay nay. I think he probably did. Okay, all right. Anyway, go ahead. So, so anyway, so that's that's kind of where the name came from. You know, the gospel tangents class, the class out in the hall that everybody likes to join. That you talk about all the stuff that they don't talk about in Sunday school. And so, uh, so that's where I got the name. And uh, and it was interesting to, to find out later that that was an Adam God conversation that I had no idea. Had anything to do with Adam God. So, <laughs> so, so within Gospel Tangents, it sounds like you'll talk about essentially anything. Is there stuff that you won't talk about? Um, I won't talk about the temple ceremony, but but pretty much everything else is it, it, is fair game. So, um, you know, I, I like to talk to fundamentalists. I like to talk to ex Mormons. I love to talk to BYU professors. In fact, I have Christopher Blythe, Doctor Christopher Blythe from BYU on right now, and. Um, and so, you know, I love to talk to all the different uh, restoration groups. And I'm just, just, you know, I am a Mormon history nerd. Uh, I love, you know, the Mark Hoffman bombings, mm-hmm. Mount Meadows Massacre. Hopefully not polygamy. the bombings or the massacre, but I understand what you're saying. Learning yeah, I, I love learning about yes. it. I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
so pretty much, yeah, every, anything non-Temple related is 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 fair game. And uh, I, I just love to, to learn all about the restoration. And not just Mormons, but, you know, Cutlerites and Strangites and Bickertonites and, and, and everything. And I really try to to talk to the best Mormon scholars. So I'll talk to Dan Vogel. Um, I'll talk to well, Richard Bushman told me no, which I'm so yeah. sad about. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Richard Bennett, um, my, my name twin, <laughs> just everybody. I, I need to get Terrell Givens on. Uh, I, he's got a book on Parley P. Pratt that I want to talk about. And, and uh, you know, Matt Harris, just all the best ones. And I mean, I usually meet them at Mormon History Association. So that's if, if you guys want to meet these people, they're always friendly, um, always nice. And Mormon History Association's great. Sunstone's great. John Whitmer is great. So now a, a curious question that I have about, and I understand why you wouldn't talk, talk, talk about the temple ceremony itself, right? Because of its sacredness, but there is so much history within uh, the temple ceremony or the temple rites that we could technically talk about um, without, you know, sort of breaching any sort of covenant or anything like that. You're just like, I just want to stay away from it altogether. So, you know, it's, it's been funny. I've had a few, um, I remember one interview I was asking about the second anointing, mm-hmm. which is super hush hush. Yeah. My, which everyone just went. <laughs> yeah. And my, my, my guess, it was funny because um, he just stopped me cold and he goes, um, you're going to have to edit this because we are not talking about that. Mm. <laughs> and mm. It was funny because it co- totally um, just like, killed my train of thought and everything and it was funny because we did when i I had to take a break to change my battery and my camera and so we were talking off camera and then he was talking about exactly what i wanted to talk about and he Mm -hmm. says well i will talk about it if you don't use the word second anointing we'll talk about it in the context of these other theological terms Mm -hmm. and so we did we did talk about it not in a way that didn't that referenced the second anointing um i have had a few um three I can think of three people that actually four now that I think about it that have kind of wanted to talk about the second anointing and so you know I'll talk about it peripherally Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. um you know there have been I I will just say this if you want to know what the second anointing is all about there are podcasts out there that talk about it explicitly Mm -hmm. I won't I won't name them but they are on the internet um but you know I'm a I'm a good church member and I'm not trying to I don't want to get in trouble with the church. <laughs> right. Which, and which, so, which is actually where my next question was going because of the tangents, because of this, I, what you call sort of the uh, tangents in the hallway. I always like to call the Mormon bar talk where we, you know, if you imagine a bunch of members of the church hanging out in a bar, obviously there's not alcohol at the bar, everyone calm down, but it's that sort of talk where, you know, like you'd hear in a regular bar, it's like, could Superman take on the Hulk and who would win and that kind of stuff. We kind of go, yeah, does Adam have a belly button? Discuss. And we, you know, we come with all of our evidence and the reason why we feel that way. I always call that Mormon bar talk. Well, you know, and it, it, it's the opportunity to talk about all the stuff that you can't talk about at church, you know, mm-hmm. so we can get into all the, the details of the, the Mormon, the Mountain Meadows Massacre. Um, we can get into the Bear River Massacre. That's that's an interview I have coming up. Um, are you talking they, with they, uh, very few people? No. Are you Darren talking Perry. with Darren Perry? Yeah. And then, um, so you can talk about Adam God, which you can't talk about that in Sunday school class. And so, sure. you well, know, you really, can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can if you want to get. I don't know. If you want to get kicked out of church? Anything is anything is possible, Rick. Yeah. Whether or not you should. Should yeah. and and can that's two different things. And so, um, you know, it is it is for me. It's just fun to talk about all this stuff that that people don't know about. Um, and so, I do I do think of it as the extended Sunday school class um, where you can talk about all the stuff, all the non correlated stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you, Do you get worried about it though, or have you ever had anyone from the church or a church leader say, "Hey, Rick, what is this? I heard that this." Or we, you know, we got this thing. Anything, anything like that? Uh, not with my podcast. I haven't heard of anything. You know, my my thought is, cause I do get this question a lot from from listeners. You know, are you worried about getting in trouble with the church? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I there's the one topic, you know, the temple. I I, I do try to avoid. You know, we'll, I'll talk about it on periphery, but but I'm not going to get into detail. Sure. Um, 
but uh, but I, I'm going to talk about everything else. And so, you know, I know if you, if we look at people who've gotten in trouble, Bill Real, John Delin, you know, I don't think either one of them got in trouble uh, until they became an activist. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I am not an activist. You know, I'll talk about LGBT issues, but I'm not going to be like the church needs to change on mm-hmm. gay marriage and they need to solemnize gay marriages in the temple. I'm not I'm not going to do that. You know, that's that's not my thing. I'll, I'll talk to Greg Prince. I'll talk to Taylor Petrie about those issues. They, you know, we'll get a historical perspective. And I don't I don't I don't think I mean, even Will Bagley, of all people, said, you know, <laughs> Mormons aren't Mormons because of church history. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, you know so church history in and of itself i think is fine it's when you get into the realm of activism the church needs to change Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's when i think you run into trouble and so i've i've really plus it's not my nature to be an activist i'm not going to be on a picket line i'm Mm -hmm. not going to you know go protest on temple square it's not my nature Sure. But I'll, I'll, I will talk about the protesters at Temple Square. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I, will, I will talk to John DeLynn or, or, you know, Bill Real or whoever, if they have something, you know, important to say. But um, I'm, I'm not an activist. And I, I think, at least that's my hope, that that will keep me out of hot water. Yeah. I like the discussion around a lot of those things, because I think that we do ourselves a great disservice if we don't talk about them, um, that we don't have discussions, we don't open the conversation. And I think for some, in some way, go with me for a minute, Rick, that uh, having the conversation is a mild form of activism. And it's a way that I feel like I can get behind it, right? I don't know that I can change the, the church as a whole, but I know that the conversations like what you and I are having today and other conversations that I've had allow people to think, allow people to ponder about things, allow people to question and become more devoted or more dedicated in their testimonies, all of those things that we can't have if we don't have these conversations at all. Yeah. I mean, if anything, I'm a slacktivist. I'm I'm not an activist. (laughs) I'm a slacker activist, I guess, if anything. And, and I, I I think it is important, you know, Kurt Franken, when we, when I talked to him, he said, we must have these difficult conversations, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I think my podcast is a place to talk about, about those things, whether whether women should be ordained, but I'm not advocating that women should be ordained. But I think it's an important conversation to have. I want to take another break. When we come back in the third block, I want to pick up some other pieces from the discussion that we've had. And we have three questions that we ask everyone who steps into the cultural hall. I will ask those of you, and then we'll put a nice little bow on this whole thing. We'll come back and do that in the third block of the cultural hall. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Richie Stedman of the Cultural Hall podcast. You should definitely check out his podcast. It's a great one, by the way. In our next conversation, Richie's going to ask me the famous three questions. Now, Rick, uh, I need to ask you what I always love and I love to save to the end. Have you ever actually listened to an episode of the Cultural Hall before? <laughs> yes, I've been listening lately. <laughs> oh, nice. Ever ever since we talked and I said, hey, why don't you come on? Is that what brought you to start That's listening exactly to it? What I was like, well, I better find out what the Cultural Hall is all about. Nice. And your thoughts from one podcaster to another? If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe for just $5 a month at patreon.com slash gospel tangents, and you can hear the entire interview before everybody else. If you'd like to watch the entire video for just $8 a month, you can either subscribe on YouTube, Patreon, or my website, gospeltangents.com. Just click the yellow subscribe button, and I'll add you to our Gospel Tangents Insiders group so that you can see entire videos. For those interested in a PDF transcript, you can subscribe at either Patreon or on my website. For just $10 a month, I'll send you a PDF as soon as it's complete. If you'd like a copy of the paperback as well as a PDF, just sign up for $20 a month at either Patreon or my website, gospeltangents.com. Of course, you can buy individual transcripts at amazon.com and just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview and you can see all the things that we have there. Don't forget to support Gospel Tangents with an awesome t-shirt like one of these. You can subscribe at Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. Get our latest updates at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Also, you can get our Twitter updates at gospeltangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got more of our great videos. Thanks again.